Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's Roy, in case you don't know me. And, uh, yeah, I'm without Val again for like two weeks in a row. So she's been kind of busy and hasn't had time to, to join us in these Facebook Lives. But I'm sure we'll drag her back one of these days. And I'm going to talk about a tool today, which I know Val doesn't really like. She's not all that big on the tools anyway. So um, I'm more the tool guy. But we've got this really nice lap grinder uh, made by a company called Meritool. So it's a flat disc lap grinder. Uh, it does a wide variety of things. And I'm going to show you what some of the things that it can do. Um, we're selling these as a kit. You can buy it as a kit where you get the machine and you're going to get like four discs with it. And I'm going to show you the, what the discs are. There's a um, 100 grit. Uh, this is diamond, right? So there's a, a diamond uh, coating on here. And it's 100 grit. So it's more like, again, if you have like a grinder at home and if you have what uh, they often call just a standard grit, that's about this. Usually it's 100 or 120 grit. So pretty, um, pretty good for just, you know, knocking off stuff. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to demonstrate in just a few minutes here for you guys. It comes with a 270 grit, so more like what we might call a medium grit, um, if you're trying to refine a little bit. What's really nice about this particular machine, this Ameritool uh, grinder, is that we can polish with it. So you can take your piece right to a polish. And uh, by doing that, you go through a series of different discs. So we go through the 100, the 270. Then we go to this one which is a 325 which it, but it sounds it sounds like it's just a little bit more than the 270 but this one I know it's hard to see we've been using them you can see we kind of we've been putting them through the paces but this is a resin one so the diamond coating is in a uh, resin um, coating here and then because of that this is actually more like a 600 grit um, like if it was diamond like one of these plated diamond plated ones it'd be like a 600 grit so you can kind of relate it to that even like I said, I, it says 325 on it, and I know that makes it sound like it's maybe more aggressive than you want, but I'm going to show you in a minute. It's actually really, really pretty good. So it comes with this resin one, which is uh, 325. The last disc is uh, a polishing pad. So normally, if this was new, it would be all nice and white and shiny, but it is. Um, we've used this already, so it has some of the um, polishing compound in it, which, again, I, I'm going to show you guys in a few minutes if you can bear with me. Uh, and then, again, as always, if you have any questions along the way, just, you know, make a comment uh, and we'll get to it. Kaylee's on the other side of the phone and she'll holler at me to um, answer a question or two. So I can tell you one of the best things about this, this machine is that I did, hadn't shown you is that uh, it's all magnetic on the back, right? So all the discs are magnetic. And so it'll just, they just attach to the, the machine you don't have to like screw them in or, or do anything like that to them. You can literally put them on, swap them out. We're talking about these nice discs that come with this Ameritool lap grinder, and they have magnetic backs, which I tell you is such a wonderful thing because it's a quick way of just swapping them out. The other really nice thing about them is there's a hole, if you can see, right in the middle. And then, so if we look at the machine real quick, it has this little raised brass piece that allows you just so you don't even have to spend time trying to center it. It just slides right on there. Now, I know some of you might think, well, what if that little bar brass thing gets in the way, right? What if I'm grinding something and it, it gets in the way? Well, I could just take it out. So um, it comes, the machine comes with a, an Allen wrench. I couldn't find ours, so I have a set of Allen wrenches. But pretty simple, you can just unscrew that, that middle um, peg. And again, they made it out of brass because brass is a little friendlier than some other metals. So if you do... Left, if you left it in there and you bumped your glass on it, more than likely wouldn't wouldn't damage your glass too much. Um, so, anyways, little you can see this little uh, brass um, threaded peg that just goes in there. A uh, great way of, of centering it up, so that you can take it out. So if you're working, you can just go right across the whole disc. So, uh, this is a tw I guess I didn't mention it. It's a 12 inch disc. So, uh, but you can do something larger than that, which is really sort of nice, right? I mean, I could slide something back and forth. If you'll notice, it comes with this nice um, little barrier here that kind of stops everything from flying all over the place, right? It keeps the water down, keeps your mess down. I, I know our thing looks really, really clean, but we, we just cleaned it up because we were like, oh, no, we're, it's like, you know, when someone's coming over to visit you at your house, you're like, oh, I better quickly clean up. Well, we, we clean this up a little probably nicer than what it normally looks, but, um, but this does do a nice job of stopping everything from flying around, but it has these... I don't know why, you, right? Like, uh, like, br like a brush has or something, right? The, and so you could slide the glass through. I'll show you. I got to, like, if I had a piece of glass that was big enough, right? I can just slide right through this, and it doesn't really interfere with what I'm trying to do, right? So I, so again, I can do something bigger than what the disc allows me to do. 
I am going to put that peg back in because I'm going to be swapping the discs out, and it just makes does make it a little easier to um, to do that. So you have to hook this up to a water supply. I think that's probably a super obvious thing. Uh, it comes with a, you can see the green hose here is a quarter inch hose that, I mean, we have it set up into this PEC system, but uh, you could uh, you could hook it to anything. You could actually find a way of hooking it to your faucet. You could get a, um, an adapter for the end of your faucet that will hook into this quarter inch tube. Uh, that's one really super easy way of doing it. The other nice thing about it, it does drain out, right? So the, all the, the water is going to drain out here. You'll see we don't have out here in this part of our building, we don't have a drain in the floor or I don't have a drain way to get rid of the water. So you'll see we're just going into this um, pretty good size trash can where we have to empty the water out manually later on. But well, I'm going to turn it on so you guys can see what it's like. So, But first, let me um, put on an apron. It, it does, you know, uh, sometimes... Uh, you can get your bellies a little wet, right? So this is a vinyl one that I happen to have laying around here. Uh, and that we're going to tell it looks pretty brand new. So uh, I'll just tie it on real quick. The other thing is probably the obvious one is some safety glasses. So I have a pair sitting here that I'm going to put on. And then um, to, to turn this, uh, well, I have to turn the water on, which is here, right? So the other nice thing about this is there is a, a valve on here. So right here on the back, I know it's kind of hard to see, but right here is a little valve, and I can turn and adjust the water there, right? So I don't. So even though I turn on the water supply, I don't have to have water coming out all the time, right? So you you can control uh, when you want the water to come on. You can also control the flow of it, right? So by how much I turn this, so I can get just you know a tiny bit of water coming out. I can have it just shooting all, all over the place. Um, really, all you need to do is keep the disc wet, so it doesn't need to have like a ton of water. This is. I don't think one of those situations where, where more water is necessarily better. You just got to make sure you're keeping everything really nice and wet. All right, as you know, the water does two things. It acts as a coolant, which is probably the most important thing, so the glass doesn't get too hot when it's sitting on that uh, diamond-coated um, surface, and kind of acts as a lubricant, so then as you're kind of, it just makes it easier to work the surface. Uh, it rinses off a lot of the, the glass powdery stuff uh, as you're grinding, so you're, just not, you're not breathing in glass powder. Uh, it's all getting wet and getting uh, going out. Um, the other thing about this particular machine is variable speed, which I can tell you, uh, I've, I've used this thing a lot, and it is really helpful to be able to control the speed of it. Sometimes, you know, um, you might not want you uh, all that speed because you're trying to control what you're trying to do, and so uh, the faster it goes, obviously, the less control you might have with the piece. So I know when I'm in a hurry, I, I crank it up as fast as I can, but other times, uh, if you're doing some more delicate work, uh, again, I'll probably show you a couple examples of that. Um, it really is helpful anyways to turn it back down. So I'm going to turn it on so I can just um, uh, rotate the dial. We're missing the little sticker that kind of has some numbers on it that just kind of gives you a reference point. So like if you uh, know you like to grind at like 60 or 70 or something, you can turn the dial so it's always to that number. I, I'm just going to turn it up to where I like it, which for me is not usually full blast. I'm gonna, I might turn it down a little bit only because uh, I'm going to get this other thing vibrating over here and make some noise. And then, um, then we'll just turn the water on, right? So you can see, again, that I don't need to have the water just shooting all over the place. I just need to be keeping the disc wet. Uh, so what's really nice about, about uh, a machine like this is it does a wide variety of different things. I tried to grab a few things we have around here. Well, since we're talking about the glass blowing, here's a, um, an ornament, or I'm sorry, a paperweight that, that I think Madison made this paperweight really quite nice. And then um, what happens off sometimes when we break off the glass from the blowpipe, it leaves this little bit of a peg. And so... We want to grind that off, and so uh, what I can do here is just come in, set it on there. So I know it's a little hard for me to hear me as I'm talking, but so one thing that's really important is not to just stay in one spot, right? I don't want to just hold it right here because then I'm just going to wear one big ring around in just one spot. I'm going to wear out the diamond coating on the pad, right? So you always want to go from, you know bottom to the top, right to the center and back. And then that uses the full disc. And then so you get a more even wear on your disc is all that's about. Um, now, uh, I'm not really applying a ton of pressure. I'm just kind of letting the weight of the glass at this point really just sort of do it. Uh, again, it gives me a little more control that way, especially when we're grinding things that are, uh, you know, round like this. You can imagine everything's going to get wet. It gets a little harder to hold on to. Uh, that's another good, real good reason not to necessarily have the full power running on this uh, machine. Uh, I don't know if you can see what I've done here, just in a really short amount of time, right? I've kind of 
taking that little nub off. I'm not going to uh, probably uh, spend the whole time trying to do that. That would be nice if I did, but um, I'll finish it up a little bit later. I wanted to show you guys some other things that it can do. So here's a fuse piece. So um, a student of mine, Gary is his name, a nice guy, was uh, making some pieces. So this was done with lots of little pieces of glass. And then we used just fiber paper to create a dam to hold everything in place, right? So that, because it's a little thicker than a quarter of an inch, and we didn't want it to spread out too much. And again, it was made up of all these little tiny pieces. And what happens when you sometimes use a fiber paper as a dam is if you can see, we've got all these tiny little sharp little um, points on the end. Is that showing up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? So that's kind of, that's not much fun. I mean, we got to get rid of them in the first place, but it's just also just so you could, easy to get poked on the end of your finger. So I'm just going to come in and use this to, to take care of those. And then um, I can just rotate it. And again, I'm really just letting the weight of the glass. I don't have to actually force the piece in at this point. I'm just letting the weight of the glass do the work. And so if you can see just in that little short time that I did, I mean, I didn't get them totally flat, but I certainly took all the points off them, right? So now I don't have to worry about as I'm, you know, as I go in now and try to do a little more uh, refining the grinding part of it, I don't have to um, worry about getting poked. Uh, the other thing that's really good for is if you're trying to really straighten this edge too, like you can come in and again, just using the weight of the glass really to do the work. Uh, just keep rotating it. You know, the question I get asked a lot of times for people that are like, when they have these, you know, it's a flat uh, disc, right? And so people are like, well, how can I grind something round? I, I actually think it's really easy to grind something round on these because, as you can see, the movement of the disc just wants me to naturally rotate the glass. I'm just kind of just guiding it as it goes around. So I don't have, I'm not going to hold it in one spot and get a flat spot to it, as you can see, right? I'm just, again, just kind of helping it go a little bit moving it in different spots on the disc so I don't wear the disc out in a single spot. Oh man, good point, Kaylee. I'm glad you mentioned that because, well, to me it feels a little loud when I'm grinding, but, but as it's just running like right now, I'll tell you, it's probably one of the quietest uh, grinders uh, I've ever heard, especially a, quiet, a lap grinder. I mean, this thing is like I mean, you hear the water, I think, more than you probably actually hear the motor running. So, and this is a really nice, I don't know the horsepower on the motor, I, uh, not off the top of my head, but uh, I know it's listed on our website. But it is probably, I know of similar ones. We used to carry some other ones that are about the size, and this was the largest uh, horsepower, which, again, is helpful if you're really trying to grind something quickly and you need a lot of power to do that. It, this can certainly do it. So that's one thing, right? So like you can see where I could go in and try to refine that a little bit more. Um, if you're a stained glass person and you're trying to grind something, uh, you know, this happens to us often, you know, we're cutting something and maybe it didn't turn out as straight as you might like. I mean, you can just come in here, put this on there. Again, kind of work it back and forth. And you can see in a relatively short amount of time, like I've straightened that edge right out. So uh, if you're, I know, if you're a um, lead cane, copper foil person doing stained glass and you're doing borders and those types of things or geometric, Frank Lloyd Wright style, craftsman style, uh, again, this is just a, it's a time saver, right? If you've ever tried to grind, a, trying to make something look straight using a standard grinder that has a round bit on it, that, that can be a bit of a challenge. But this, I'll tell you, it's pretty hard to mess up, right? I just got to set it on there and move it back. Hopefully, again, you're noticing I'm using the entire disc, right? Don't, not getting stuck in one spot, kind of coming back and forth. You know, again, does does a pretty nice job. Didn't take very long to, to really straighten up that edge at all. Uh, if you're, oh yeah, if you, I, I mentioned uh, fusing glass uh, earlier too, but What's nice is a lot of times fused glass normally is about a quarter of an inch thick, right? Standard uh, art glass is an eighth of an inch. But so I grabbed this. This is a quarter inch piece. This was actually in our scrap the, this morning. Uh, so it's a quarter inch piece of glass. And it does it just as easily as if it was an eighth inch, right? So you can come back. 
And you can see I got plenty of water on here. And for the most part, the water's really not flying everywhere. I mean, you can, if you look at it here, I'm not like just drenched in dripping water. You can look on the backsplash, right? There's not a lot of water there. So for the most part, most of it stays in here. Um, you can see what I did in just a short little amount of time, right? It's not perfectly straight, but it's a lot closer than it was just, you know, a minute ago. Uh, really, really pretty nice tool. The, um, oh, last thing I wanted to show you guys was this. So this was, uh, this is a technique uh, that I learned from a gentleman, Kent Lauer. I mean, you guys have heard of Kent Lauer wandering around on the um, teaching uh, world out there. But so this is a technique he teaches where these are individual pieces of glass that are laminated together. And then you grind them to um, shape them. Uh, I did one here where that is. So this one, I don't know if you can tell, but it's not it's not very shiny. So I'm gonna I think I'm gonna try to use some, one of the other grinders, just to, one of the other pads. I, I'll show you guys. All right, let me shut this off real quick. Just to, so, whoa, whoa, whoa! I was just shutting it off to let it. But here's one that I did. Um, same sort of concept, and you can see, I think that, you know, like I put a curve on here, right? So if you look at it from the side, you can see it's a curve. And then, so all these edges were ground. So I could do a nice flat one using this. I can also do this curved surface, was done also on that grinder. So again, going through those same steps of, if you remember, there was the four discs, so it's 100 grit, 270 grit, and then the resin grit, which is 325, and then the last would be the polishing grit. So I'm going to um, swap out the uh, disc real quick, show you what that's like. Um, I think I am gonna, I'm gonna throw on this 270 for a second. So let me throw this one on. Let me turn that on and then uh, I'm gonna grind a little bit on, I think that, oops. I'm gonna grind again on the paperweight even though it probably doesn't. It really should have been more on the 100 grit, right? I, I had, a, I mean, if you're trying to take a bunch of glass off, the 270 grit's really not the way to go, so. But you can see how that will, you know, takes that off. Even that does pretty good, right? Taking that off a little bit better. You can see I've reduced it on that. Um, I'll go back to the, this was that quarter inch piece that I, that thicker piece that I had on there. Again, this is not going to, um, net, this is not going to be fast because it's 270 grit. But if you're trying to polish up or if you want to eventually polish, um, we have to, you ha really have to go from every step. And so... The, the goal is to remove all the scratches. So like when I go to the 270 grit, I'm trying to remove all the scratches that I got from the 100 grit. And then when you go to the 325 grit, you're removing all the scratches from the 270 grit. So if I'm at the 325 stage, which I'm going to swap it out real, for you guys real quick. Um, if you're at the 325 stage and you still see scratches in your piece, then you have to go back to the 270. So you probably just didn't get rid of all the scratches that you, you wanted to in the 270. Does, does that make sense, right? So like if the finer you go, if you're still seeing scratches, it's because maybe you hurried the one step. I know that's always my problem. I'm always in a hurry, so I rush some of the steps sometimes. But let me show you the resin one because this one is kind of nice. Oh, let's talk about... That magnet really works, doesn't it? Gosh, that, I was going to say that one's on there like, like pretty, pretty good. Uh, I want to talk about maintenance too in a, in a minute. We'll talk about a little bit of maintenance we can do to just make sure that this is working the way we want it to work. Again, this is the resin one. I'm going to turn this one on. I'm going to turn on the water. And um, I should have grabbed some paper towels, which I did not. I'm going to go grab it real quick. You... You guys can just enjoy, you can enjoy watching the, <laughs> the machine run Another around. Another ASMR video right here. Oh, my gosh. Right? Yeah, so maybe some of you might be wondering, there's, so there's a little vibration going on right here. Do you see that? I mean, it's pretty, pretty typical. Um, we have ours on a plastic table, which, you know, I've been looking for something sturdier, and that's why we get a little vibration is because the, the plastic table vibrates a little bit, right? So I'm trying to get you know a nice sturdy metal or wood table you, you wouldn't run into this problem this is one of those you know the plastic tables that the legs just fold under so again probably not sturdy enough anyways so this is like the uh, resin one so this is when we're trying to really polish something up a little bit more so this edge um, you can see I, I think the clear part is actually part of the actual glass so I'm gonna come in and just put this on the end here 
and then just try to come, you know, go back and forth. You know, you can move the water somewhere, which is also nice, right? So if the water is not going in the right spot, oh, I just, <laughs> I just shot Kaylee uh, with a bunch of water. That's that's nice. Wow, she. So Kaylee got her, she got her shower today, so I guess she's she's probably good. Um, so you can. My point was, you could place the, you know, the water wherever Get you a want. Piece that wouldn't be in the way. Exactly. Or if you wanted to shoot your camera person with the, some water, it's easy to do. So. Um, so here too is like sometimes on these, I, I slow it down a little bit just because again, it just gives me a little more control of what I'm trying to do in my hand. I mean, you definitely don't want to um, shoot this across the floor, right? So it also has a tendency to kick up more water the flatter the object is, right? Because then the water has to go around the object and then go somewhere. And so then sometimes that's when you might see it shooting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. It's not. It's not funny. Hazard of the business. That's right. She's going to. I'm sure Kaylee often regrets uh, having to work with me, but uh, no, uh, so you can just see, right? It's mesmerizing. Yeah, I could do this like all day. It is really relaxing to watch. Uh, you know, it's really interesting to say that because I find, you know, a lot of times in the in the grinding and polishing stage of when I'm doing things, it's usually you're almost done with the project and stuff, and so you're getting toward the end, and it is kind of re you know relaxing. It is almost like a Zen state where you're into just trying to finish it up, and you know you're almost done, and you get to see the results of what it's going to look like. To me, that's part of the fun. So I don't know if you can see, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm, again, I have this real nice frosted look, but that's exactly what, you know, I'm going for here is I want that. I can't, I don't see any really big scratches. So it looks like I did a decent job at the stage before this. Looks like I probably need to do a tiny bit more. So I might just see if I can get rid of that one little spot real quick because I think I might try to polish this one end. If not, I'll polish it anyways. And then uh, just to show you, I'm not really... I haven't decided what I'm doing with this piece. I don't know if I'm going to leave it a, a, a block like this or if I'm going to round edges, but I just got Kaylee again. So, all right, Kaylee's like, all right, we've seen this one enough. Move on to some other. Dang, I do this backwards every time. Sorry, 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 sorry. So um, then we're going to, um, I'm going to swap out and show you the polishing disc. And then while, we're, while I'm swapping out and showing you the polishing one, let's talk about the maintenance a little bit because what's really important about this is that... Um, you need to keep this disc really nice and um, and clean. This disc here, because this is steel, just standard steel. And a lot of times people ask, well, you know, with all this water, shouldn't it be stainless steel? I mean, that makes a whole lot of sense. But um, it needs to be standard steel because the magnet magnets don't stick to stainless steel. So that's why it's not stainless steel. And Well, because of that, then it can rust, and it can rust very quickly. So actually what you're seeing is some of the rust that's on there. Um, what also happens is if you, I don't think, it, maybe it's on one of these discs anyways, if you leave your disc on, I mean, it, when you're done grinding, yeah, here's a good one. So when you're done grinding, you know, like for the day, uh, it, the best thing to do is take the disc off, right, dry off the back of it, um, dry that off. If it looks like it needs to be clean, then, we'll, then you should clean it, and I'm going to show you how that's done. But you can see here on the disc, like we've left this one on a little too long onto the, onto the disc here. And it starts to create some rust. I mean, it's picking up rust from the disc. And then it makes this, I mean, right now it's totally fine, but it makes it not want to stick as well to the disc, right? So, again, uh, maintenance and keeping it clean is important. So how we do it here is you want to use, like, a green scrubby pad, right, one of these scrubby pad things, and just WD-40. I mean, it's the simplest thing ever. And then what you do is you spray this with, the, with oil. You can spray the disc if you want, but I'll tell you, when you turn the disc on, it's going to throw the oil around. So I usually don't do that. I spray the the, um, the scrubby pad first and then just turn it on. And it doesn't have to be super fast. And then you would just hold it on there and then just work it back and forth until you can work off. Um, I know I didn't spray it with any oil, but uh, then you would just work it off. I don't know if you can see what just what little bit I did here, but you see how that looks shinier already? I mean, you should be able to get the whole disc that, you know, that shininess. I mean, we should be able to. We just haven't taken the time to. Uh... We've been loving on it too much. Yeah, today. we just. Yeah, I was just telling. Well, I was just showing some of the other people on staff how to clean it because uh, they they've been using it without realizing that it does need to be cleaned periodically. But I'll tell you, if you if you stay on top of it with some WD-40 and a scrubby pad, it it'll last like forever. So um, that's the maintenance on that thing. So now I'm going to put on the polishing pad. As I mentioned to you guys before, this is. I could. have... Did I not stop it? I guess I didn't stop it. I guess it works a little bit better if you actually shut it off and 
I'd be really impressed if you could get that pad on it while it was moving. I know, was it? I was going to do that. So then um, stick the pad on. And then so what we need with the pad when we're polishing is a polishing compound. Um, do we still have polishing I compounds? I think we do. We'll have to check. It's getting harder to find, but what we're using is a product called cerium oxide. And it's a powder. And so you just add water to it. So I have some kind of mixed up here already in here. Usually we just keep it in a container. I'll show you. Yeah. And uh, it is. Um, uh, and then you want to use a sponge. So you can see this kind of red color. Sometimes people call it jeweler's rouge, I think, because the some people refer to it that. Uh, but it is some kind of, and it settles. You can see how it kind of settles down here in the bottom. And I'll tell you that I'm kind of a wuss. So, um, but you guys already know that if you've been watching if you've been watching me. And so I put a glove on just because the cerium oxide gets like everywhere. I mean, it'll get all on your hands and um, under your fingernails. It's just harder to clean off is all. And so I I'd always wear a, a glove when I'm doing it. Now, what's really important about this one we're polishing is we don't use any wa We don't use water from here. So we're not going to turn on any water. I sometimes actually will even turn the, the water hose away it's just as a mental reminder for me to like, okay, don't turn on the water. I mean, you can turn on the water, but all you're going to do is rinse off all the polishing compound you're putting on. You're just going to use more polishing compound, right? So, and then here's another one, too, where we want to go, uh, you want to go much slower uh, for, again, a couple of reasons. Probably the most important thing is that since we're not using any water, the only water we're using is what's going to come from this container. Uh, you don't want to get the glass too hot, right, just from the friction. And I've actually seen where uh, by, you know, people were so aggressive trying to polish something that they forget to keep adding water that this cerium and water mix and uh, they got it so hot that the cerium oxide actually burns into the glass which then you have to go to the next last step and grind that off again and then come back and polish right so just to, just kind of a pain so uh, i'm going to grab some of this this is how uh, again i uh, normally do it i think uh, my good buddy kent taught me this so kind of mix it up right because it'll settle, you just kind of mix it up with your sponge, and then we just drip it on while it's running, and you just try to cover the um, cover the disc, right? Uh, and then, and then grab your piece, and then we would come in. I could probably go a little faster. And again, same deal, right? Use the whole use the whole pad because you're going to do the same thing. If you just hold it in one spot, you're going to do it. Now you just got to be careful with the pads. And try not to come in. Uh, you want to come in very uh, gently to the pad, right? If I come right down and hit it, especially this one where it has all these sharp edges, you don't want to gouge into the pad because then it can interfere with how well it wants to polish. So um, anyway, uh, and then what you would do is periodically you would add some more of the of the cerium mix, right? And again, you can see I'm just squeezing the sponge, dripping that on there. And then come back in. Now, you know, again, I'll warn you that so the cerium oxide is, it makes everything super slippery. You think water made stuff slippery, it gets worse with the cerium oxide. Another reason why we don't run this at full speed. Uh, and then, uh, and I don't know if the, I, to be honest, I'm not sure the glove is, I think the glove helps me hold on to it, to be honest, compared to my bare hand, but well, I don't know. Maybe I just think that. So then, um, if you can see this, can you guys see it? Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, you can sort of see, like in one spot anyways, uh, right in the middle, I guess. Probably because, is this the side that I was doing? Is that the side I ground? It wasn't even the side I just ground. Oh, this isn't the, that wasn't the side I ground. I can't tell. It wasn't the side I ground, and so it's not totally flat. So when I'm polishing, I don't know if you could see, but it was only polishing like in a high spot, like from here across the middle where it's polishing because probably I didn't grind that side. So, but I did grind this side. So let's go, let me do this one real quick and see if we can see something dramatic. It does take, um, uh, you know, a little while, as you can see, all of this kind of hand polishing stuff is time consuming, but most it's definitely people. definitely faster than if you were to use like the po hand polishing blocks that we've got. Oh gosh, heck yeah, right? And for your fusers in the room, you know, um, what's the advantage to this is that instead of having to do the fire polish in the kiln where you're relying on heat to make it shiny uh, that also often makes corners really rounded and everything starts smoothing over which you might not want and so the advantage to this is that 
you know, these edges are going to be just as sharp and crisp as I, as I have right here, right? So, and you want to rotate your piece too, so don't always have it at the same angle. So, um, because more than likely as you're doing this, you're probably, you know, pushing more pressure on one side than the other. So it's good to, to kind of move it back and forth in different angles. I, I rotate it a lot of times as I'm working, just subtly kind of rotate it from side to side, and that helps me also from, again, if you just hold it in one spot. This is true of grinding, too. If you just hold it in one spot, you'll probably get a, a, like an angle on it just because of how you're pressing. So you should always either rotate it as you're doing it or just change the angle every now and then so you're grinding from a, a, just coming at it from a different angle. So, Yeah, well, that's not very dramatic at all. So I think part of it is I, I don't really have much cerium uh, in my mix, so I, it really needs a little bit more. Little bit. Yeah, but well, if you were here, people, it looks super shiny. You'd be like, you would be unimpressed, I'm sure. So I'm not sure uh, what else. Uh, unless is there questions about the? Wow, no comment. questions. Wow, just I, yeah, I know, isn't it? Just we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it on. Words. I know. I'm so excited about it, is, it. it is so much fun. So. Well, if you, if you think of something later, if you guys have questions later on, I mean, you can certainly reach us, right? You can um, email us, Facebook at DelphiGlass.com. You can reach out on Instagram or on, you can messenger and face, Facebook, right? So you can get a hold of us that way. I can't remember all the things that I'm supposed to be saying. So, um, <laughs> Our cheat sheet's in the other Yeah, room. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But uh, otherwise, that's it. This is a great tool, and I think everyone should buy one. So if you want to head to the website right now, you can, you can probably get one. Yeah, absolutely. They are actually coming in stock, I do believe, next week. It should be any time now. So. Yeah, so I can tell you, the computer says March 3rd, which is, you know, just in a few days. I'm not, I, I would think probably easily by next week we'll probably have them in. So, um, but, you know, thanks for joining us today, and you'll probably see us in a few weeks, a couple weeks, and maybe Val will join us by then. I'll, I'll talk her into it.